Hello guys, in this video we are going to be configuring a high availability and we are going to be using or doing the active passive mode um, which is the one that Cisco, um, Cisco, oh my god, which is the one that Palo Alto recommends. Uh, Palo Alto recommends to use the active passive high availability. They do not recommend the active active. I don't know why. Um, I think because it's just it takes a lot to configure active active and it's not as good I think so um, I want to on my next video I want to create a, an active active um, high availability um, and the requirements for you to be able to configure um, active passive between two Palo Alto network firewall are the following so you need to have the same model for both firewalls and both firewalls need to also have the same palo alto networks palo alto network operating system version um these it, they also need to have the same type of interface um and it needs to have the same set of licenses as well so those are the requirements so what we are going to be configuring is um the control link which is going to be one slash four is going to be the control link and the control link is the one that exchanges the hellos heartbeats and the high availability state information and management plane synchronization for routing and also user id information um, and then in one slash five we are going to be doing the data link and the data link is the one that is used to synchronize the session uh, forwarding tables, IPsec, security associations, and ARP tables between the firewalls. Okay, and the data link, um, is you are able to set up the data link using an ether type, so you don't need to configure any IP address for that. But for the control link, you will need to configure a uh, layer three. Okay, for, for control link, layer three, data link, layer two. And then one slash six is going to be the backup for the control link. And one slash seven is going to be the backup for the data link, okay? So let's go ahead and start with this configuration. Um, I already have a connection um, to the Palo Alto Networks GUI interface. So we are going to start with the active firewall which is this one so we are going to go into well the first thing well let's go ahead and start um the way that you configure this is by going into device and inside device you want to go into high availability the first one that you want to configure is the setup and the setup you want to enable high availability you want to make sure that you have the mode is active passive because that's the one that we're going to do the group ID, it, in, you need to make sure that this one matches to the other firewall, to the passive. So we are going to leave it at 10. Um, you need to have the peer high availability one. So HA1 is a control link. HA2 is a data link. So the peer high availability IP address um, is this one, 172.16.1.2. And the backup it is going to be uh, for the backup, it's going to be 10.10.10.2. There we go. <clears throat> okay. So next, uh, the active pass settings, you want to leave it as that. The election settings, if you want to enable preemption, you can go ahead and do that. Since this one is going to be the active, just m let's make it lower than what the default is. And we are going to leave the default on the passive. So the lower the priority, um, whoever has the lower device priority is going to become the active. So this, since this one is going to have a 10 and the other one is going to have greater than 10, then this one is going to be the active. All right, now let's go ahead and go up. Now we need to go into the control link HA1. And remember guys, the HA1 is the one that um, does the hello exchange, heartbeats, and HA state information. And 
is the one that does the edge information and the data link is the one that does the which is the HA2 data link is the one that does the security associations the ARP tables um, and also synchronizes the sessions um, so but the one that we're going to do first is the HA1 like I said is the one that does the exchange the hello messages and the heartbeats and all that I just want to remember that for the exam so over here you want to select the port that we want to do for HA1 which is going to be 1 slash 4 uh oh H why isn't it in there um, it is not in there you cannot see it any other interfaces because we first need to configure those <coughs> those interfaces as HA if they're not configured as HA we won't be able to assign it as HA so we need to go ahead and go to each of those interfaces and we need to configure the interface type you want to make it as SH HA which means high availability and then they are going to be they are going to show in the under the the high availability settings right so this one is going to be one slash five it's also going to be HA because this one's going to be used in this one's going to be used for HA2 this one one slash six it is going to be the backup um, the backup interface for the control link which is HA1 um, and then we are going to do one slash seven which is this one is going to be the backup for the data link and like I said before the control link uses layer three the data link uses layer two something that you need to uh, remember there we go so now if we go back to device and we go ahead to the control link since we want to pick um, one slash four since then it now the type the interface type it's uh, high availability it should show in here and we're going to pick that IP address for this one is going to 172.16.1.1 net mass 255.255.255.0 we don't need to do a gateway because they are going to be in the same subnet in the same network if they were not on the same network the, the two interfaces then you have to provide a, a, a gateway now we are going to do the backup for the control link the backup for the control link is going to be one slash six and the IP address is going to be 10.10.10.1 the net mass is 5.5.2.5.2.5.0 no need to provide gateway because they are going to be in the same network now we need to do data link HA2 we are going to select one slash five no IP address because we are going to use the transport type is going to be Ethernet um, therefore we are doing layer 2 so we don't need to configure any IP addresses now we are going to select the backup for HA2 and this one is going to be 1 slash 7 okay so that is great that has been configured let's go ahead and commit my changes and after hopefully we don't get any errors I don't think we are going to get any errors because I I think I'm I'm good at configuring HA or oh, high availability and you can make it Palo Alto come on come on come on ain't no errors there we go great so now we have configured that now we need to go into the Palo Alto this one over here which is the passive which one is going to be this one over here for this one we are going to go into device and this one already has if we go into the network and if we go into the interfaces you can see that we have configured the high availability for this interfaces type so they are going to be shown right away so I'm going to go into setup they are going to enable the group ID needs to match the same as the active 10 was the same now we need to provide the peer HA1 which is the control link IP address or the peer which is 1.1.1 and then 10.10.10.1 the priority we are going to leave it at 100 
because I want this to be higher than the active. The active we set it up to 10, so that is great. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the control link so we can exchange those hello and heartbeats. Uh, we are going to select one size four IP address one twenty two that sixteen that one that two net mass two five five that oops two five five that two five five that two five five that zero gateway we don't need that because we are on the same subnets now we need to go ahead and configure the backup for the control link for HA one we are going to specify one slash six IP address ten dot ten dot ten dot two net mass 255.255.255.0 no need gateway because they are on the same subnet now we are going to go into HA2 uh, so we can use the synchronized session the forward tables and all that good stuff we are going to select 1 slash 5 we are going to be using layer 2 the backup is going to be 1 slash 7 We are going to use for that uh, layer two. So this is great. Everything looks good. So we can now go ahead and commit our changes. And hopefully we do not get any errors. And if we do not get any errors, we are going to we are going to go into Um, the active firewall There we go no error, so we are good now if we go into the management and In the management this is for the active firewall and the active firewall we are going to go to dashboard So now we are going to add the widget and we are going to go to dashboard widgets We are going to go to system high availability. So that's going to add a widget as you can see right now uh, the mode is active passive the local which means this act this firewall it is the active and the local and the repair is a passive so the other one is a, is a passive you can see that it has not been synchronized yet um, you can see the app is the same version threat same version antivirus same, ver same version everything is the same version you can see HA1 the control link is up the backup of HA1 is up HA2 is up the data link and the HA2 backup data link is also up um, so now what we could do is we can go ahead and synchronize to peer and you can see that it is in progress if we go I believe we go to probably system um, you can see it right here when it is synchronizing you can see that it is synchronizing the IPsec and it's doing other synchronization with H HA the HAs so that is great looking like it's, it is working you can see right here it is synchronizing everything okay let's go ahead and go back to the dashboard and you can see right now that it is synchronized now if we go into the passive firewall go to dashboard widgets system high availability you can see that the local is a passive and the peer is the active so that is looking great so now if we go into network um, I want to configure um, ether, Ethernet 1 slash 2 and then we are going to push that so if we go into network Let's do H Ether, Ethernet 1 slash 2, which is the local. In the local, we are going to have a, an IP address of 192.168.1.1. It is going to be a layer 3. Um, the router that we're going to be using, let's go ahead and create a new virtual router. We are going to be calling this in. or I just call it local there we go the security zone let's see if it lets me create one from here 
target let's just call it local as well accept that there we go press ok we have a layer 3 oh, I forgot to add the IP address so let's go ahead and go back in there and we are going to go into the IPv4 we are going to add a static one, one IP that one is h.1.1 slash 24 we are going to press ok alright so that has been configured let's go ahead and go to the dashboard nothing yet to resynchronize so let's go ahead and commit my changes and after we commit the changes we should see uh, it is probably going to say that it's not synchronized so we could probably um, press on the synchronize button so it can push that synchronization so it can synchronize with the passive and it should send what we have changed from the active That has been good. Well, you can see right now that the synchronization is in progress. So it is synchronizing to the peer. You can see it in here, the configuration audit. If we go to monitor system, you should see it at the bottom that it is synchronizing again. Uh, so now the dashboard, it is still synchronizing. Let's go ahead and refresh. It has been synchronized. Now let's go ahead and go to the passive. Oops, we want to go to the web GUI actually. Let's go ahead and go network and refresh. And you can see it right now. Uh, this, as you can see right now, everything that we have configured, you can see that we configure remember on the ethernet 1 slash 2 we configure layer 3 interface with this ip address the virtual router and the security zone so you can see that it has been synchronized um, with the active firewall so it is working correctly it's working the way we wanted it so this is it for this video guys if you guys enjoy this video the first thing you need to do after this is go ahead and follow me on Twitter, CCNA Daily Tips. Um, also, go ahead and share this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. I love you, and I will see you on the next one.